Want to speak real Arabic from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at ArabicPod101.com. When learning a new language, it's easy to think, I don't think I'm making any progress. What if I never reach my goals? We all get these thoughts from time to time, but are they worth being scared of? What are the fears language learners tend to have the most? And how can you learn to overcome them? Here are the top four language learning fears, according to our users. Number one, I'm not good enough to start speaking yet. This is a pretty common fear or misconception that most learners have. Here's how you overcome it. The best way to get good at speaking is to start speaking from day one. You need to open your mouth and just start talking. If you think you're not good enough, just focus on the lines you want to say. Number two, I'm afraid I'll never be fluent. You've got to set small, specific goals. Make daily goals, like having just a five minute conversation. As these small goals add up, you'll be speaking more comfortably. Number three, I'm not making any progress. There are two things you can do right now. Use the dashboard to track your progress. Our dashboard shows how much you've accomplished. Or try a harder lesson on our website. The lessons come with line-by-line -line translations, and the hosts explain everything. Now you can understand something you didn't minutes ago. Number four, I'm afraid of not understanding anything I hear. This fear can occur when you hear advanced grammar and vocabulary, and it just goes completely over your head. To beat this, simply read along with our line-by-line -line tool. It's the best way to instantly understand advanced conversations. Translations and scripts are right in front of you. For real-life situations, learn useful phrases such as, can you say it more slowly? I don't understand. There's nothing wrong with saying that you didn't understand something. So, these are the top four fears and how to overcome them. Luckily, we also have the perfect tools available to help you conquer your fears. Sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Don't let your fears stop you. Start learning now. Today, we're going to talk about four techniques to help you stop translating in your head and instead start thinking in your target language. This will allow you to have conversations with ease, read smoothly, and better understand native speakers. These are four methods to help you think in a new language. Number one, surround yourself with your target language. This way, you'll be completely immersed in the language. Without realizing it, you'll learn pronunciation, sentence structures, grammar, and new vocabulary. Play music in the background while you're cooking, or have a radio station on while you study. Just use one of our endless podcasts available to you. These are easy to listen to in the background while doing other things. Number two, learn through observation. This is how we all learned our native languages as kids. Words will develop their own meanings that relate better to your target language, rather than meanings that are translated directly. Number three, speak out loud to yourself. Even if you're a little embarrassed, it forces you to listen to how you speak. It makes it much easier to spot simple grammar mistakes. Number four, practice daily. If you practice everything for only one day, you won't retain the information you learned. The brain can realistically only focus for about 30 minutes. So studying a little every day allows you to absorb better. Follow these steps and have patience. You'll soon be able to achieve your language learning goals. Just make sure to remember these four methods. Sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources and start learning more every day. Hi everybody, this is Nora from ArabicPod101.com and welcome to our new series, Ask an Arabic Teacher. In this series, I'm gonna be answering some of your most common Arabic questions. The question for this lesson is, which dialect of Arabic should I learn or focus on? 
The variant of Arabic you should learn depends on your goals and what you want to achieve using your knowledge of Arabic. If you want to learn Arabic to become a professional translator, work in politics, read newspapers, or write reports for work, then you should definitely focus on modern standard Arabic. On the other hand, if you want to be able to communicate with Arabic-speaking people, you have to learn a popular dialect that's widely understood, like Egyptian Arabic or Levantine Arabic. As Nelson Mandela once said, if you talk to a man in a language he understands, that goes to his head. If you talk to him in his language, that goes to his heart. And let's get the facts straight. Nobody speaks modern standard Arabic in their daily conversations, not to one person in the whole entire world. To understand the difference in usage between modern standard Arabic and dialects, you need to know what modern standard Arabic and dialects mean to Arabic-speaking people. Babies learn the dialect of their country or region first to communicate with their parents. Then, when they go to school, they start learning how to read and write modern standard Arabic because this is what they will use to read textbooks, take exams, read books and newspapers. They will learn it from kindergarten up to the end of high school. But depending on their major, they might take more modern standard Arabic courses throughout their college years. For example, if their major is translation or journalism, they will continue taking classes because that's what the news, the formal and legal papers is written in. Other than that, social media, speaking with professors, co-workers, teachers, friends, and family is all in dialect. That's why the average Arabic-speaking person might make a lot of mistakes when trying to use modern standard Arabic. Even Arabic speakers need a lot of proofreading when they're writing a very important document. What about choosing between dialects then? Variants of Arabic dialects sound pretty different from each other. They're almost like a different language. Choosing the dialect to study, of course, has to do with the region of the Arabic-speaking world you're interested in, but you should keep another factor in mind. Some dialects are easier to learn and pronounce depending on your native language. For instance, I noticed that Levantine dialects are easier to learn than Egyptian dialect if your native language is Japanese. That's because of similarities in rhythm and phonemes. So, listening to different dialects is a good way to get a feel of how they sound before you make up your mind. Keep in mind, though, that the most widely understood Arabic dialects are Egyptian Arabic and Levantine Arabic because of how popular their media is in the Arabic-speaking countries. Top 10 questions you should know. Ismak e. What's your name? Ismak e. Can you guess it? It's, what's your name? If you meet someone and you say, Ismak e. And the guy or the girl will respond with their name and they will say, for example, Ismi Brihan. Izzayak, how are you? After this person will say Ismak e, they'll probably say Izzayak, which means how are you? And you would answer Ana Kwayesa, Ana Kwayes. Ana Kwayesa is for female and Ana Kwayes is for male. And you can also say Alhamdulillah, which means thank God. So you can say Ana kwaesa, alhamdulillah. When someone asks you, is zayak? Intamneen, where are you from? The third question someone might ask you is, intamneen, which means, where are you from? And here you can say, where are you from? <laughs> your country or your city. So, for example, someone will ask you, intimneen, and I will answer, ana min Masr, I'm from Egypt. Or, ana min Qahira, I'm from Cairo. Eid Miladak Imta. When is your birthday? The fourth question someone might ask you is Eid Miladak Imta. When is your birthday? For example, someone will ask me, I'm a female, so they will ask me Eid Miladak Imta. And I will answer Eid Miladi Fionyu. My birthday is in June. Second thing, where do you live? Another question someone might ask you is Second thing, where do you live? And you might answer uh, specifically your street name or the city where you live. So, for example, you can say, I'm a second from Mohandesin. I live in Mohandesin, which is a district in Egypt, in, in Cairo. Where do you work? Another question someone will ask you is, Where do you work? And here you can say your workplace, your company's name and so on. So, for example, I will say, I work for a drug company. Telefonak Kim. What's your phone number? 
Another question is Nemretak kim? Which means what's your phone number? And here you can just say your phone number, Nemreti, is one, two, three, four, five, six. Italim <laughs> Arabi fin. Where did you learn Arabic? People might be amazed or probably will be amazed at how good you speak Arabic. So probably they will ask you, Italim Arabi fin. Where did you learn Arabic? And here you should say Italim Tarabi ma Arabic pod one one dot com. I learned Arabic with ArabicPod101.com Don't forget it! بتحب الأكل المصري? Do you like Egyptian food? Probably people will be curious if you like Egyptian food and they will ask you بتحب الأكل المصري? Do you like Egyptian food? And be honest, Egyptian food is quite delicious so you will say أيوة بحب الأكل المصري Yes, I like Egyptian food Or maybe you want to say مش قوي Not really رحت مصر قبل كده? Have you been to Egypt? The next question is رحت مصر قبل كده Have you ever been to Egypt? And here you can say Aywa, yes or لا, no Want to speak real Arabic from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at ArabicPod101.com The question for this lesson is What is the structure of modern standard Arabic sentences? In this lesson, we're going to give you an overview of how sentences are structured in modern standard Arabic. Language structure is usually described by the order of three main elements in a basic sentence, verb, subject, and object. For instance, English is an SVO language, meaning that the subject comes first, then the verb, and lastly the object. You can see this in any sentence, like, John plays tennis. For Modern Standard Arabic, this looks a bit different. Modern Standard Arabic has two possible sentence structures, namely verbal sentences and nominal sentences. First, let's take a look at verbal sentences. As you can tell from its name, verbal sentences start with a verb. Then we have the subject and lastly the object. The following sentence is a VSO sentence. Sharibe Rami al Rami drank the juice. Next, we have the nominal sentence, which starts with the subject, then the verb, and lastly, the object. This one has an SVO structure, just like English. Rami shariba al Rami drank the juice. Note that in modern standard Arabic, when there is a verb in the sentence, verbal sentences are preferred. This will look different for sentences with the verb to be in English because there is no verb to be in Arabic. Observe the following sentence. Rami is tall. Because there is no verb to be in Arabic, this is going to be a nominal sentence consisting of only a subject and an adjective. This is how the sentence is going to look like. Rami tawit. Rami is tall. Now let's see the second point in sentence structure, which is the noun adjective order. Let's observe the following phrase. Big house. In English, the adjective big comes first, followed by the noun, house. In Arabic, this is the other way around. Observe the following phrase. Baytun kabir. Big house. Here, we have the noun first, baytun, meaning house. Then, we have the adjective, kabir, meaning big. The last point we'll touch on is where prepositions are located in a sentence. In this aspect, Arabic is quite similar to English. Observe the following sentence. Rami is in the house. In English, prepositions precede nouns. The same applies to Arabic. Rami fi al bayt. Rami is in the house. Note how there is no verb to be in the Arabic sentence because it is implied from the context. Next, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? رجل يقدم شكوى على منتج اشتراه عن طريق الإنترنت. ماذا سوف يبدل؟ نعم، خط خدمة الزبائن. لو سمحت، لقد وصلت للتو طلبية، ولكنها ليست ما طلبت. نحن آسفون ما هو الغلط بالضبط؟ لقد طلبت سترة بثلاثة أزرار ولكن التي وصلت 
في هذا الرين فقط فهمت قد يكون طرازا مختلفا نحن آسفون جدا عن ذلك سوف نبدل ذلك في الحال لذلك هل يمكنك أن تعيدها عن طريق الشحن المجاني؟ حسنا وأيضا هذا القميص مختلف عن الذي رأيته في الموقع الإلكتروني هذا ليس ما توقعت هل أستطيع إرجاعه أيضا؟ ما هو الاختلاف؟ ظننت أنه قميص بدون طوق ولكنه تحول إلى قميص بولو مع طوق فهمت هل قصصت الشعار؟ نعم فعلت ولكنه ليس ما ظهر في الصورة هل أستطيع إرجاعه؟ يا سيدي لدينا القميص مع طوق وبدون بياناتنا تبين أنك طلبت الذي مع طوق حقا؟ إذا لابد وأنني اخترت المادة الخاطئة نستطيع تبديل المنتج طالما الشعار ملصق ولكن من الصعب تبديله إذا قصصت الشعار فهمت إذا هل يمكنكم تبديل السترة فقط إذا سمحتي؟ بالطبع مرة أخرى نحن آسفون على الخطأ ماذا سوف يبدل؟ رجل يقدم شكوى على منتج اشتراه عن طريق الإنترنت ماذا سوف يبدل؟ نعم، خط خدمة الزبائن لو سمحت، لقد وصلت للتو طلبية ولكنها ليست ما طلبت نحن آسفون، ما هو الغلط بالضبط؟ لقد طلبت سترة بثلاثة أزرار ولكن التي وصلت في هذا الرين فقط فهمت قد يكون طرازا مختلفا نحن آسفون جدا عن ذلك سوف نبدل ذلك في الحال لذلك هل يمكنك أن تعيدها عن طريق الشحن المجاني؟ حسنا وأيضا هذا القميص مختلف عن الذي رأيته في الموقع الإلكتروني هذا ليس ما توقعت هل أستطيع إرجاعه أيضا؟ ما هو الاختلاف؟ ظننت أنه قميص بدون طوق ولكنه تحول إلى قميص بولو مع طوق فهمت هل قصصت الشعار؟ نعم فعلت ولكنه ليس ما ظهر في الصورة هل أستطيع إرجاعه؟ يا سيدي لدينا القميص مع طوق وبدون بياناتنا تبين أنك طلبت الذي مع طوق حقا؟ إذا لابد وأنني اخترت المادة الخاطئة نستطيع تبديل المنتج طالما الشعار ملصق ولكن من الصعب تبديله إذا قصصت الشعار فهمت إذا هل يمكنكم تبديل السترة فقط إذا سمحت؟ بالطبع مرة أخرى نحن آسفون على الخطأ In this video you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? أستاذ وطالبة يتحدثان متى سوف تذهب الطالبة إلى مكتب الأستاذ؟ في الحقيقة لم أفهم كل شيء من درس اليوم. حقا؟ ألديك أي أسئلة؟ نعم، لدي الكثير. هل لديك وقت الآن؟ إنني مشغول قليلاً. أرجوك، تعالي إلى مكتبي بعد الظهر. سوف أكون هناك من الساعة الواحدة ظهراً حتى الرابعة بعد الظهر. حسناً، سوف أكون هناك في الساعة الثانية. متى سوف تذهب الطالبة إلى مكتب الأستاذ؟ أستاذ وطالبة يتحدثان متى سوف تذهب الطالبة إلى مكتب الأستاذ؟ في الحقيقة لم أفهم كل شيء من درس اليوم حقاً؟ ألديك أي أسئلة؟ نعم، لدي الكثير هل لديك وقت الآن؟ إنني مشغول قليلاً أرجوك، تعالي إلى مكتبي بعد الظهر سوف أكون هناك من الساعة الواحدة ظهراً حتى الرابعة بعد الظهر 
حسناً، سوف أكون هناك في الساعة الثانية. Ten phrases you'll never want to hear. Let's get started. Ah, I'm going to be like subtly, like low-key aggressive <laughs> in this video. وزنك زاد في الفترة الأخيرة؟ Have you gained weight recently? Or أنت تخنت؟ Did you get fat? The first uh, phrase is and excuse me. <laughs> وزنك زاد الفترة الأخيرة <تصفيق> وزنك زاد الفترة الأخيرة Have you gained weight recently? And usually it's like with a question mark like وزنك زاد الفترة الأخيرة mm. أنت تخنت Did you get fat? Something like that Not really nice عندك شعرة بيضة You have a grey hair عندك شعرة بيضة You have a grey hair And that's not nice either <تصفيق> Yeah I also like if someone says you have a gray hair, I'm like, oh. قلت لك كده. I told you so. Or مش قلت لك كده. Didn't I tell you so? قلت لك كده. I told you so. You can also say مش قلت لك كده. Didn't I tell you so? You kind of scold the person. مش قلت لك كده. Ah, ah. أنت مرفود. You're fired. This one I I'm aching to practice one day when I become like. I don't know, like a, like a boss and he's like, أنت مرفود. اطلع برا. Don't use this one. You're breaking hearts with this one. You're fired and get out. Yeah, but why are you firing me? I'm so cute. اطلع برا. I'll probably cry on the spot. المشكلة مش فيك. المشكلة فيا أنا. It's not you. It's me. Oh, this one, this one is really sad. This one's heartbreaking, like truly. المشكلة مش فيك. المشكلة فيا أنا. It's not you, it's me. Usually you would hear it if you break up with your girlfriend or boyfriend, Egyptian girlfriend or Egyptian boyfriend. المشكلة مش فيك, المشكلة فيي أنا. Usually it's a lie. شكراً على السيرة الذاتية، لكن الوظيفة مش متاحة. Thank you for your resume. However, the position is no longer available. شكراً على السيرة الذاتية، لكن الوظيفة غير متاحة. Thank you for your resume, but the job is not available anymore. Thank you, but no. لازم نشوف ناس تانيين. We should see other people. Oh no, this is with the breakup again. لازم نشوف ناس تانيين. We have to see other people. <laughs> it's not you, it's me. مش معايا فلوس ارجعها لك. I don't have your money today. Oh, I hate this one. مش معايا فلوس ارجعها لك النهارده. I don't have your money today. If someone tells you that, please ask again and again because that probably means they won't pay you back, so be careful. محتاجين نتكلم. We need to talk. This, this one usually parents use a lot. محتاجين نتكلم. We need to talk. Or maybe before a breakup, you also use it. محتاجين نشوف ناس جديدة. We need to see other people. امشي من وشي. Get out of my face. And the last one is امشي من وشي. Get out of my face. And usually you say it after you say اطلع برا as in get out, get out, get out of my face اطلع برا, اطلع من وشي 10 Egyptian foods بسبوسة بسبوسة The first Egyptian food is بسبوسة 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 is made of corn flour and then you put some sugar and nuts and then you put it in the oven and after that you put honey and lemon on it on top of it and it's really, really sweet. For a sentence, you can, for example, say, "Innaharda el halo basbusa." Innaharda el halo basbusa. Today's dessert is basbusa. Bit bil basterma. Egg with pastrami. The next word is bit bil basterma. Eggs with pastrami. For example, you can say, "Hanaftar bit bil basterma." Hanaftar bit bil basterma. We'll have eggs with pastrami for breakfast. Halawa tahinaya. Halawa. The next one is halawa tahinaya. Halava. Uh, in Egypt, we usually use the word halawa, but the tahina part is actually to address this kind, like the type of halawa. In the Middle East, we make halawa out of sesame paste. For example, you can say, بحب الحلاوة تحينية. I like halawa. Hamam mahshi. Rice stuffed pigeon. The next word is, hamam mahshi. Hamam mahshi. Rice stuffed pigeons. For example, you can say, هنتغدى النهاردة hamam mahshi. We will eat rice stuffed pigeons for lunch. شربة عدس. Lentil soup. Shorbet Lentil soup. 
For example, you can say Shurbet al-Ats biddafi fi shita Lentil soup keep you warm in winter Lentil soup in Egypt is a very traditional dish You can eat it with bread You can eat it with rice And you can even eat it with pasta But mostly we eat it with bread You just cut the bread apart And you just put it in the soup And you stir a little bit And it is so delicious Togim bamia Okra tajin Togim bamia Okra tajin For example, you can say Tagim bamia lao samahat Okra tajin, please I don't know why, but nobody likes bamia Like, nobody likes okra Especially children And when, like, a mom wants to punish her children And she cannot really do anything about it She's like, okay, for lunch I'm going to make you some okra I'm going to make you some bamia And everyone's like, no Fatta Fatta The next one is Fatta Which means Fatta It's also a traditional Egyptian food For example, you can say Fa'id al-Adha binakul fatta In Eid al-Adha, we eat fatta Fatta is a traditional dish we usually make Especially for that day, for the Eid al-Adha day It's about this big And it's rice And on top of it there is bread And then some tomato sauce And you then you put like huge, like big chunks of meat Like this much, one chunk of meat Like all around the... I don't know, you just put lots of meat Because it's a meat feast Fulu ta'amaya Full and falafel Full ta'amaya Full and falafel Full is the full beans And falafel is made of full beans as well Mixed with corn Some veggies, some like green stuff I don't know its name And eggs And you mix them all in a blender And then you fry it You just fry this full paste, full bean Paste. It's the traditional breakfast for Egyptians Like usually they just For breakfast they always Almost always have Full and falafel But it's not good Because it makes you get into food coma At 7 o'clock in the morning <laughs> For example you can say I'll invite you to eat full and falafel Koshari Koshari The next word is Koshari Koshari Also it's one of the most famous traditional food and it's very similar to fatta, except that it doesn't have meat inside Or it doesn't have as much meat as fatta does But it's, it's also starting with a base, like rice as a base and then some uh, Oh yeah, rice as a base and then some fried bread And on top of it there is a tomato sauce, a fried onion and some lentil And maybe minced meat as well I don't know, I think the inexpensive one, the cheap one is without meat and the expensive one is with meat But it's very like, overall it's very inexpensive meal, you can have it on the go For example you can say الكشري من أكتر الأكلات اللي بحبها كشري is one of my favorite food مسقعة مسقعة The next word is مسقعة مسقعة is basically تاجين But instead of بامية, instead of أكرة, we use eggplants also with minced meat and some tomato tomato sauce and garlic and mostly just like okra tajin mostly children don't like it and mostly it's served as a punishment I really don't like it for example you can say المسقعة ده سمعوي مسقعة is very fatty 